for the characterization of the quantum dots, we're going to use the Carey Eclipse Fluorescent Spectrophotometer, which has a plate reader. So we will load our black plastic plate with our samples. Use a cuvette or, or a pipette to transfer uh, a small amount of your suspension of your nanoparticles into an appropriate row and you can see the rows are have letters and the columns have numbers so you can keep track of which sample you placed where. I suggest you put all your samples in one row and then leave a far corner you could put just solvent for your blank. The black 96 well plate has a notch in it here that notch is going to be lined up with this tab here for proper alignment in the spectrophotometer. And the placement of this plate reader has been aligned carefully by Dr. Johnson, so don't touch any of the knobs, don't force anything, just gently place the plate in the plate reader tray, and then close the door. Then we can turn on the spectrophotometer with the switch here, and we'll use the software here on the computer. On the computer, we will open up the Carry Eclipse folder, and we're going to do a series of scans. So we'll open the scan application. You can read the tip if you want to. But it will uh, connect with the instrument. You see it's taking some time to connect with the instrument. And once it's connected, it will set an excitation wavelength and an emission wavelength. We want to change the setup of the instrument. We want to do an emission spectrum, but we want the excitation wavelength to be 400, according to our handout, which means we don't want to start scanning at 400 because we will get the excitation light rather than the emission from the sample. So let's start the excitation or emission scan at 420 and we want to scan out according to the uh, procedure scan out to about uh, 650 let's do that okay and uh, medium seems to be a good speed for this experiment uh, don't change any of these options and the accessories we're going to use the well plate use the reader 96 well plate and hopefully you remember where you put your samples. Maybe put them all here. H1, 2, 3. All 10 of your samples. And did you put the blank here? Hopefully we can change this. Let's make that one our blank. So A12 will be our zero or background scan. Okay. So you see it's changed the excitation wavelength, the emission wavelength. These are status. We can see right away the intensity of the emission. And so we're ready to start the scan. The plate reader will automatically position the plate under the light source for your first sample, H1. And you could go in and program each sample well as a particular sample name. In your case, you probably don't need to do that much detail. So here you can see it's scanning uh, the different wavelengths, measuring the emission. And this is the signal it's getting from the emission. We don't actually have um, a sample in the well, so we're not getting a lot of uh, signal here, but you see it automatically went to the next sample, H2, and it'll just keep going uh, until it scanned all of your samples. Let's look here, so there's a little bit of uh, noise, I guess, and hopefully you'll get a, a much stronger signal there. Once it's gone through all ten samples, which uh, we're not going to sit here and watch, and stop, so we're going to stop this, you won't do this of course. You can see that it's going to automatically stacks your graphs. 
So you can see each sample. Um, you could save this graph, export it as a, a JPEG or something, but we want the data. We're going to make your own graph uh, for your report. So uh, you can save all of the data as a batch file, uh, but in order to make a report in Excel, you need to save your data as a spreadsheet ASCII star.csv, which means comma separated values. And so put your group name in here. And do not select this. You want all of the scans in the batch to be saved into one file. And then you can email that to yourself. The computer is connected to the internet. And then you can open it up in Excel and make your graph for your lab report. To turn off the spectrophotometer, make sure it's stopped, it's parked. And then it's uh, quite simple. You can just uh, close the software, turn off the instrument, and remove your plate, again, gently from the plate holder and cover up the instrument again.